in woodland depths far beyond the bounds of belief, into distant realms of imagination, lies a land inhabited by elves and fairies and visited by amazing mud-living creatures. It's a land known as Middle Birmingham and the mud-lovers are from Hyters Heath Primary School. The school has become part of the fellowship of forest schools, even though it's nowhere near the countryside, let alone a forest. It's not the location that's important, it's the principle that matters, although mud does seem to be fairly essential. Just the opportunity to get muddy <laughs> uh, without worrying about it. Is, is, is great. It doesn't and say that in the national curriculum <laughs> anyway, does it? <laughs> well, uh, maybe not in so many words, <laughs> but it does encourage us to, to um, build investigation skills into children. Um, and it does encourage us to help them to explore the world around them. Hytus Heath is one of a growing number of city schools attracted by the idea of forest schools. In Birmingham, it's been encouraged by the Park Ranger Service. The idea originally was there's something that was born out of Scandinavia where there were lots of woodlands around, lots of forests and that they could utilise, but uh, it's become increasingly obvious in, in built up and urban areas that we don't have those resources everywhere. So anything that's natural or even semi-natural, you know, can suffice. Some people have argued, you know, that you've got to go off into the woods in a minibus. We would argue that's not the case at all. There will always be something, you know, within uh, a 10, 15 minute walk, I'm sure. Adrian's ranger responsibilities include a small deciduous wood that's escaped the grasp of developers. It's just a 10 minute walk from Hytus Heath School and once a week, he leads a class of year two pupils from schoolroom to woodland with the help of their teacher and teaching assistant. The class is split into three small groups, each spending around two hours on forest school activities. Come on then guys. After counting everyone in, the session starts with a reminder of woodland dangers, at least one of them rather unexpected for Birmingham. Just going to see if we can remember some of those things we need to watch out for when we're down in the woods. So put your hands up and see what... Sophie? Glass. Glass, yeah. Now this is an important one because we know there's lots of glass on this site. Yeah. Ellie? Ellie? Uh, dog poo? Dog poo, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, no one wants to step in stinky dog poo. Wolves. Wolves? Have you seen any wolves in here before? What, sort of, what colour are they? It's brown. Brown wolves. All right, well, everyone, keep your eyes out for wolves. Dogs, yeah. In fact, Adam spent the early morning clearing the area of all hazards, a time-consuming task, especially if there are wolves. This is a great resource, apart from the fact that it is prone to vandalism. There's a lot of glass around in certain areas. That, you know, we get dumped cars and motorbikes in here. Um, there's some undesirable behaviour from time to time. So anything that we build that's permanent or semi-permanent, such as a tree decoration uh, or shelters, it's prone to, sadly, vandalism and damage. And that can be quite disheartening for the, uh, for the kids. Undeterred, however, they press further into the woods, where the children are presented with their main task. You know, last week, I got a telephone call from the King Ferry about their houses yeah. being destroyed. Yeah. Well, you built some beautiful houses for Why them, didn't you? Why the fairies have phones? Oh, they do. Yeah, they've got, <laughs> some of them got mobile phones as well. Yeah, it's incredible. So That's progress for you. Once it was fairy tales, now it's fairy text. However, with the elf phone issue resolved, the children set to work creating shelters using specially provided willow branches. Who's going to live in this shelter? Uh, footballers. Fairies. Footballers, not yeah. fairies. Footballers. Football fairies. They're really good at playing. Is there a purpose to this particular lesson? Absolutely, yeah. It's all about you know getting them to uh, to be creative, you know, to think for themselves, um, to communicate with each other. But uh, it, these are impressionable young minds, and you're telling them that there are fairies in these woods. Yeah. But also, we tell our children that Father Christmas exists, don't we? <laughs> and we tell them that the tooth fairy, uh, take, you know, gives them some money for their teeth. So I'm just continuing a long line of uh, tradition and folklore. <laughs> and what are you building here? A castle. That's the other part of the castle as well. Oh. You're building a castle? Yeah. You hold that. And who's going to live in the castle? The fairies and the pets. And the keisha. 
No, not they me. got a Keisha. Thank you. Oh, so we get a lot a broad variety of curriculum me? skills that we do. I mean, a lot of communication, okay. speaking and listening, working cooperatively, problem solving, which you can see it's so integrated. They're doing that all the, all the time, really. Um, and also, you know, your design skills, your actual artistic skills, your imagination, they're actually creating something. They're using the fine motor skills, the gross motor skills, to get them out in the fresh air, physical activity. No, no behavioural problems? They don't sort of run off or anything like that? No, not especially. I mean, we've, we've worked for a few weeks now on setting some firm boundaries. I think you give children a bit of responsibility and, and they yeah. work with that. This is week four of a 12-week programme of activities. Other woodland work has included decorating trees, hunting for bugs, identifying leaves and painting with mud. But crucially, the children can do what they want to, so long as it's productive and not disruptive. The idea is that the, the sessions are not really activity-led or, or leader-led. Um, you know, the idea is that we take the kids into a natural environment and using what's available, you know, we let them hopefully take us in, in whatever direction they want. It sometimes requires a few props or a, a bit of structure, um, you know, to, to give them a, an impetus or, or an idea to get them started. But once the idea starts to, to flow, then really we just uh, we just let the, the kids take it in whichever direction we can. So if uh, if a child said, "I don't want to build a fairy shelter. I want to build a, a wigwam for for Hiawatha or whoever," perfect. I mean, that, that's exactly what we're looking for, and that does happen. So Adam may appear to be in charge as a forest school leader, but in fact he's following the children. When he suggests they may like to move on to mud painting, they come up with a different idea, mud jumping. More fun and more sense on such a gloriously muddy day. What uh, are the children learning here, Adam? They're exercising, they're learning to have fun. I think too often they live in a sterile world and if we can get them back to nature a little bit, then I think it's all the better. <laughs> It looks like you're enjoying it almost as much as the children. Oh, yes, we have a great time. We yeah. really enjoy it. You see a different side to them when they come out, as of the school environment as well. Really? Which way? Also, the, the, the children that tend to be quieter become more animated, chatter a little bit more. They use their imaginations. That's it's great. They love it. These children have already experienced a similar programme of activities at Bell Heath Outdoor Learning Centre, run by Birmingham City Council. It was such a success, the school resolved to turn itself into a forest school. Every pupil will go down to the woods one day. Getting children outside is, is just an extra sort of dimension really for them and uh, they love it. They love the freedom. Uh, there's, a, there's a different dynamic, I think, being outside than in the classroom where it, it, does, it can feel quite enclosed, whereas the dynamic outside is it's free, it's great fun. And as long as the adults um, build the boundaries and, and, and the safe boundaries, then they feel free within that to explore and, and to have a good time. We're seeing how this goes. It's, it's the beginning of a project, as I said before, things have to grow and develop organically, if you like, um, and, and we'll see how it, how it goes. Who knows, in three or four years' time, you know, they might be out there 50% of the time learning. Hyder's Heath School is also developing its own grounds and proving that not even trees are absolutely essential for a forest school. Come in, guys, let's get set down. No one. This central quadrangle is the perfect location for a campfire. The fire may be imaginary, but the dangers are treated as real. This seat swapping game trains children to take the no risk route around the flames. That was absolutely perfect. How many people went inside the fire circle? No one. The campfire sessions are designed to give children the chance to reflect and discuss what they've been doing. So who's going to come and live in your house, Zach? Uh, uh, the, the king. The king? Uh, the king. Fantastic. His, his princess. Oh, his princess, yeah. Very nice. 
Why does it have to be done outside in this circle? It's, I mean, it's dry it's inside. Right, it? Yeah, it's dry inside, but it, it just ke keeps them together as this small group. There's no distractions out here. They're not particularly cold at the moment. I mean, they're, they're ready to go in for their dinner in a minute. But it just means that we've got the outdoor, they're still in touch with nature. They've got this special area for talking, yeah. really. Anyone else remember anything? Well, what can you remember? Naomi is being trained as a forest school leader by the Bell Heath Centre. In two weeks' time, she'll take over the programme from Adam. And Adam will move on to help another school. But first he'll plant a small copse and a willow hedge on the school field at Heiter's Heath, providing another, more secure setting for activities. The field is already used for such learning games as wizards, goblins and giants, similar to paper's scissors stone. Wizards zap goblins. Goblins scare giants. And giants squash wizards. The teams decide which character to adopt and then confront each other. The team making the winning choice of character must then try and capture the opposition. So it's more than just fun? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a game, it's fun, but it's, it's a definite thinking game. There's a lot of thinking skills. I mean, even as, as an adult, for the first few times, it's hard to get your head around, can they run, do they have to stay? And if they catch a member of the other team, that means they get added to their team. So sometimes you've got just one child on their own has got to be against the rest of the group. Of course, when you are the only one left on your team, it might be safer just to run at the earliest opportunity. I think that's the end of that, then. That's a wrap. <laughs> The forest school movement is already established in Wales and some rural parts of England. Slowly, however, it's taking root across the whole country, including the conurbations. Hytus Heath is one of around 30 schools in Birmingham, either starting or planning to become a forest school. There are other woodland and environmental initiatives, but they may not have the same underlying ethos of allowing children to learn in their own way and in their own time. What we're trying to do here is give them an opportunity to, to explore other learning styles, which kinesthetic is a key one. You know, a lot of kids, um, whilst they may not be able to um, do um, long division, they may be able to, you know, change the engine in a, in a van. Um, and giving them an opportunity to, to express themselves and learn in a different style, we can really bring them out of themselves and, and can bring them back into, you know, to, to the education system. And have you noticed any changes in the in the children, in your pupils, in their behaviour outside the classroom yeah, and inside the classroom? Yeah, very much so. We quite often, me and Mrs Thomas, quite often comment on changes we see in the children, even over a short period of four weeks now. Um, the confidence levels certainly increase when they're outside. The level of talk and productive talk definitely increases when they're uh, out at forest school. Um, we see them saying, coming up with ideas that they might not come up with. We see children running around and being active that might necessarily take more of a back role in a larger group, such as your whole class group. Forest schools, it seems, are good news for children, but of course, even better news for elves and fairies in need of shelters.